Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to do a BIOS firmware upgrade on the Z Zotac ZBox BI320 bare bones mini PC. I'm going to use a USB thumb drive and uh, DOS to update the BIOS. Now the reason I'm using DOS instead of Windows is because this machine does not have Windows on it. I only have Ubuntu on it. So if you don't have access to Windows or you're running something else on this machine, you're going to need to use DOS to update the BIOS. Zotac has great information on how to do all that, but unfortunately they don't tell you how to get a get this machine to boot into DOS. And what you need to do is you need to create a bootable USB thumb drive with DOS on it. So I'll show you what how to do that today. My BIOS version is an old version. It's a B239P102. And the way I find that out is you go into the BIOS on this machine. If you look at my video on this, uh, the review on this box, I show you how to get into the BIOS. And on the main screen, you'll see the product version, which is the BIOS version. And it tells you the number on it. It also tells you the date of it. Why is that important? Because you want to know whether you have the latest one already. You don't need to flash it or you know do any of this if you have the latest one. I've downloaded the latest one from uh, Zotac and I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. There are three uh, BIOS re revisions that have been released for this machine. And if you have the latest one, it should be dated April 2015. Well, mine's not. Mine's dated May 2014. So I want to get the latest one to get all the bug fixes in the firmware done on this Zotac Zbox uh, mini PC, the BI320. Basically, it showed th this information came from their website but uh, you know regardless uh, make sure that you don't already have the latest one the April 2015 they don't tell you which version it is but you can tell from the date mine's in May my, mine's the May version so I'm gonna update it if you have the latest don't do it you don't need to next what are you gonna need well you're gonna need a USB thumb drive I'm using the Sandus Cruiser Edge. Mine's at 8 gig, uh, but a 16 gig will do just fine as well. It's actually overkill. Even on the 8 gig, it's overkill, but it doesn't matter. Uh, if you don't have one, I'll put the link to this in the uh, video description for you so you can get it for, you know, eight bucks from Amazon delivered. Next thing we're going to do is put the, the thumb drive into one of your ports on your laptop or your PC. And then we're going to the file. We're going to go to the file browser and then in my case, it'll, of course, in your case too, it'll be on the computer and removable disk. Now make sure you're dealing with the right disk when you're doing this because we're going to format it to make it clean. By formatting, this is the reason for formatting it is to make sure that it can take a full for format without any errors. If there are errors on your thumb drive, do not use it. That means there's something wrong with your thumb drive. Get another one and, you know, try again. The thing to do here is right click the removable disk and uh, in our case it's G, so note the letter. And then when you right click, you'll get the option to format. We'll hit format. Now I've already formatted this drive, so I don't want to go through that because it takes about five, 10 minutes to do a full format. All, you know, make, make sure that you hit restore device defaults here. And that makes all these the default settings, which work just fine. And then uncheck quick format and then click start. And then it'll start the slow process of doing a full format on your USB thumb drive. But in the process of doing that, it will check it for errors and, and make sure it's working okay. So if you get to the end of the quick format without any errors, you're ready to go. Now I've already done that. So when you uh, finish doing that, just catch up with me here or just pause the video and then catch up. So I'm going to hit close here and minimize this because I'm going to be using that again. Now the next thing you're going to need is the actual firmware. So we're going to go get the firmware from Zotac's webpage and it's uh, zotac.com and forward slash us forward slash home html. Just google it, you'll find it. Then we're going to go to products and mini pc. Then go to the sub menu down to the B series which is what I'm doing. I'm sure this procedure will work for other uh, series that they have. So just hit on the B series because that's what I'm doing. Mine's the BI320 and there's all the B series and mine's the very bottom one down here Zotac Zbox BI320 we're gonna go through that and once we get there we're gonna to go to downloads and under downloads you're just gonna click on that link you get four more links here and what you want is a BIOS and then you have another link here Zbox BI320 nano BIOS and update utility that's what we want so we're gonna click on that and you get this 
little prompt here. And then you get the save file. Uh, and I've already done downloaded this and saved it just for brevity in the video. So hit OK. And as you can see, I put it under downloads and I created a, a, a folder called BI320. And then I put the, fo the uh, zip file in there. You can do put it wherever you'd like. Just remember where you put it because you're going to need to get it back. So I'm going to hit cancel. You're going to hit save. And uh, just close this off here. Next, we need a piece of software to make your thumb drive bootable. Uh, we're going to go to uh, open up another uh, browser window here. And we're going to type in yummy. That's Y-U-M-I and enter and then uh, I'm using Internet Explorer uh, sorry Firefox and it just does a Google search for me so just do a Google search for YUMI and you should get the link you see here yummy multi uh, boot USB creator that's what you want so we're gonna click on that and then we're gonna scroll about two-thirds of the way down and uh, you'll see the download yummy link here just click on it and it's spyware free, you don't need to worry about it. I'm using it without any issue. And then you, and actually Yummy is my favorite piece of software for making bootable USB thumb drives. It works in every machine I run it, so I, I really like it. So then we're gonna click Save File. And I've already downloaded it to my Yummy folder here. You can see it right there. Uh, just for brevity's sake, I'm not going to hit Save here, but you can and then uh, follow along with me afterwards. So I'm gonna hit cancel here. Now we've downloaded the file and we're gonna go to your file browser again. And this time we're gonna go to downloads where we save the file. Um, you know, wherever you put it, go there. I'm gonna go to yummy. And there's a 2.7 file, so double click on it. And after it opens up, I'm getting a user account security warning. Just, just hit yes on that, you probably won't get one or see this on this uh, program but if you get a warning just hit yes on it and then you get the license agreement we're gonna hit agree and then you get onto the actual setup of this this program now I'm assuming that you left your thumb drive plugged in and it you know automatically knows the G is my thumb drive so we're gonna go there you know make sure that you are your drive is, is being shown correctly here you can verify that by going to computer and then looking at your removable disk in my case it's G so that's good uh, next we're going to choose a distribution and what we're going to use is something called FreeDOS and it's under you scroll down to system tools and you'll see it right there FreeDOS Balder image so click on that and you see that it says it's it's you know it says red it's in red here so you need to supply it an image to actually create the USB thumb drive. Uh, easiest way to get that image is click right here, this link right next to the FreeDOS. Uh, and it says visit the Phoenix Balder home page. So we're going to click on that. And that's one of the reasons I like that. The uh, uh, one, Another reason why I like Yummy because it gives you the link to these things. You don't have to go looking for it. So there's two under download balder you'll see that there's two Im images there's a compressed one and a regular one you want the regular one so we're going to click on that and obviously I've already downloaded it I'm just going to hit uh, uh, OK here and it's going to go into my um, download directory and as you can see it's already there so I don't need to do another download just download it to where you find it convenient and then we'll move on from that so I'm just hit cancel here and then we're going to go to that, uh, uh, back to, let me just close this browser window here. And we're going to go to, back to Yummy here, and click on Browse, go to your download directory, which mine already is, and then you'll see the Balder image right there, so double click on it, and then the text here will turn green uh, instead of red. So here we're going to go and create, and just click on Create. It tells you what it's going to do read that over make sure it's doing what you want it to do where you want it to do it because if this is doing it on the wrong drive then it's going to mess up whatever drive it's running on so hit yes and a uh, little DOS window pops up and now it's creating the, the uh, drive or the bootable thumb drive all right uh, all finished process is complete I didn't get any errors if you got errors then start from the start again 
and make sure you format your drive and go through the whole process again. And if you continue to get errors, then uh, try and get another image or another uh, go to another computer to do this. Do not uh, go forward from this point uh, if you get an error on any part of this process because if uh, uh, a corrupted USB thumb drive and a BIOS flash are a bad combination. You can pooch your machine. You don't want to do that. So here we're going to go next. And say, would you like to add more distros to? No. We just want the one distro on that drive. So hit no. And then click finish. And at this point, if you go to your file browser, and then you go to G, you'll see that you have a drive that says multi-boot G, and then has those two um, folders. You can go further if you want. And you'll see the rest in here. And you see Balder 10 there. So I know that this drive is now ready to uh, boot my uh, mini PC. So we have the drive ready to boot. Next, we got to put the BIOS flash software or firmware and, and, and utilities onto this drive so that we can actually you know, uh, flash the BIOS when we boot it. So next, we're going to go to uh, back to my good old downloads uh, directory. So go to downloads where, or wherever you stored these files. And then I put them under, under Zotex BI320. And there's the zip file. The way to handle this is just double click it and you'll see all the files. Now I'm just going to draw a box around them. You can do, do control A here as well. So, so hold your control key down, hit A and that'll highlight them all. And then you right click them and choose copy. And all those files are going to go into what they call the root directory of your uh, USB DOS boot disk. So just click on multi boot on G and then right click here anywhere in the white and hit paste. And that'll write all those files onto that disk. And now you have all the tools, including the firmware, which is here, the bin file. Um, and you're ready to go. So at this point, you're going to unplug your thumb drive and or shut down your computer and then unplug your thumb drive. Up to you how do you do how you do it. And we're going to put that thumb drive into the um, BI320, the uh, Z box, and uh, we're going to boot with it. So I'll show you what that looks like next. Okay, here we are at the BIOS the default screen, the main screen. The reason I'm here is just to explain what I'm going to do next. I'm going to reboot the machine. And then when we see the BIOS splash screen, I'm going to hit the F8 key. Now, by default, you got one second to check to hit that F8 key. Uh, I've changed it to five seconds. You can see that on my earlier video. Uh, but basically what we're going to do is reboot, hit the F8 key, and go into the boot selection menu. So let's do that now. Here it beep. Then we go, you see the splash screen, I hit F8, and then you get your boot uh, selection screen. Please select your boot, boot device. Well, I don't want to boot off the Hitachi, that's my internal drive. I want to boot off the SanDisk Cruiser Edge, and now I'm assuming here that you've put your uh, USB thumb drive into one of the USB slots like I have. Uh, I put it in the back, one of the blue slots, the uh, USB 3 uh, slots, and then I'm going to hit Enter here after, I choose my, after you choose your USB thumb drive. So Enter. And we go into the Yummy Boot Disk uh, configuration screen. If you scroll down, the timer disappears. So we're going to scroll, scroll down to System Tools, and then we're going to hit Enter. Then we scroll down again to FreeDOS Balder 10, and hit Enter. And then the default here is counting down is 3, and 3 is what we want. So we want just hit Enter here again. Now, my screen cuts off the drive letter for some reason, uh, but we're currently in the A drive and we want to go to the C drive because that's where all the files and utilities that we dumped on the drive are. So to do that you type in C and then colon and then enter. Now we're in the C drive though you can't see it here you'll see it on your screen more than likely uh, and if you want to make sure that all your files are there just type in DIR for directory and there's all the files. Again, it's cutting off the first letter of all the, the uh, files there, but I know what they're called. And the main file that you need is AFU303. Now, uh, we're going to use the AFU303, AFU303.exe, to back up the file. Now, the instructions say that you can back it up as a ROM or as a bin, but I know the program 
is running it as a BIN. So I'm going to, hold on a second here. Let's make this a little better. CL, CLS will clear your screen. And I'm just going to hit enter till we can see me here. So we're going to type in AFU303 and then EXE. And then we're going to type in whatever we're actually what we're doing right now. We're going to, I'm going to show you how to back up your BIOS file so that you know that it's working. Now, when you do the backup, it basically tests the, the AFU flash program and your uh, DOS environment to, to see if it's working or not. If it backs it up, then you know it's working. Then you're ready to go on to the flash. Plus, it, it, it's backing up your file so you have a backup uh, of the original uh, BIOS if you want to go back. So I'm going to call it uh, org, so ORG uh, BIOS. And you can call it whatever you like. It doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to call it a dot BIN, bin, or, or binary. Then forward slash O and the letter O. There we go. And then hit enter. And then you can see that it's reading the flash and actually saving the flash as org bios.bin. So now I have a copy of the original BIOS file. Next thing we're going to do is flash this to uh, its new BIOS state. So now we've backed up that, uh, this uh, bin file that's the current BIOS file or image. Next we got to uh, upgrade it and this is crucial that you do this correctly. Unfortunately the instructions from Zotac are less than clear but I'll, I'll walk you through it and what you need to do is type in e, the AFU303.exe. Next after this you put the, the uh, BIOS file name though that's not what the instructions tell you to do but that's what you need to do. The next the, the fi BIOS file name in this case is B239 so let's start with that B239 and syntax is very important here don't make any mistakes uh, in, in doing any of this you got to get it perfect so B2390415 dot BIN dot B I N, and then you have to put a bunch of switches, is what they're called, and uh, the switches are forward slash P as in Peter, forward slash N as in Nancy, forward slash B as in Bob, forward slash R as in Richard. Now we're ready to flash it. We're going to hit enter, and at this point, it should update my BIOS. And there we go. Reading flash. Erasing the block, boot block. So this is the process it goes through. Do not power it down. Do not stop this. Once you hit enter, let it go all the way through. And don't do like I'm doing. I'm doing this in a lightning storm. So if the power goes out in the middle of this right now, that's it. My machine is toast. So I'm quite a, kind of nervous at this point. So don't do that. Wait till it's not, you know, thunder and lightning outside like it is right now. Actually, when I started this, it wasn't, but it is now. Thank you. That's it. We are finished. So I'm just going to do a reboot here. So control alt delete and I'm going to go into the BIOS which is escape when you see the splash screen. Okay. Well, warning, CMOS errors detected. Well, that's probably because I just did a BIOS update. So here I'm going to hit delete to enter the setup. It says F1 to continue. So we want to delete. And there we are. There is the new BIOS. You can see that now I have BP239P103 and 4152015. That's the new BIOS. And obviously we're in like Flynn. Uh, it's all updated. So here at this point, just check through your settings. You know, see how everything is. Um, I want to disable that. And uh, 
power off. Yeah, it has reset my BIOS settings here, so I'm going to just quickly change a few here. And uh, features. All right. Yeah, that's back to normal the way I wanted it. And here again, your setup uh, prompt timeout will be one second. You can enter. You can just change that by hitting the shift and plus key. I'm going to change it to five. That's fine with me. Um, anything else I need in here? Nope. Looks good. Looks good. All right. I'm going to just hit here. I'm going to hit F10 to save and exit. And my machine should boot without issue. Let's do that. F10. Save your configuration and exit. Yes. There we go. Back to normal. And, uh, at this point, it should just boot right up. Well, it's booted into the um, USB key, not to my uh, hard drive. So I'm just going to have to change the boot order here. Let's do that. Let's just hit Control-Alt-Delete and get into this BIOS again. See what's going on with that. Okay. Okay, so my boot priority has been changed because of the BIOS flash. So, I'll, you know, here we're at the main. Let's go over to boot. Go down to... Yeah, and look at that. Boot option number one, SanDisk Cruiser Edge. Well, we want that change. So go down to hard drive, BBS priorities, hit enter, and then hit enter again. Choose the one that want to boot off, which is a Hitachi. And then we're done here. Escape. Go to save and exit. And, or hit F10 if you wish. I'm going to hit F10. And then we're done. Basically, you've updated your BIOS using DOS successfully. Thanks. That's it for my video. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you like this video and it helped you out in some way, do me a favor, click on the like button right down here. And uh, you know, if you wish to subscribe to my channel, just click on this link up here. And that should subscribe you to the, the uh, Richard Lloyd channel or Richard Lloyd USA channel. Um, okay, again, thank you very much for your time and watching.